I am so excited to share today's video with you. I am flipping this dresser that I received for free as a gift. It is going to be in our baby boy's nursery. The second I saw this dresser, I had a million ideas flying through my head. I finally got down to a few details and I knew for sure I wanted it to be this really deep green color. We are doing Baby Boy's Nursery, a really fun theme that I will be sharing with you in the future because I don't want to spoil too much. I'm going to be walking you through pretty much everything I do for that room, so that's something to look forward to in the future. I started by sanding down the first layer of protectant on this dresser. I didn't want to sand it down all the way. Because I knew I'd be painting it, I just needed to sand it down enough for the paint to have something to stick to. I'll be honest, I was really hoping that this green would be a lot darker, and in certain lighting it is, but it turned out to be on the lighter side. I wanted something almost black. <laughs> this isn't it, but that's okay. I learned to love it. I didn't want to have to go back to the store and waste money on more paint, especially with how long it takes to paint. This is a real time of me painting, not the time lapse. Even though those are so satisfying, they are equally as misleading. I feel like we forget how long it actually takes to do things when we're so used to seeing everybody post time-lapse videos. I'm obviously guilty of it and I don't mind posting them, but I think it's important to remember it does take a long time. The next morning I moved on to the drawers and I envisioned these being sanded down and beautifully stained and living their best life, but <laughs> it took so long to sand this one drawer down. The time lapse does not do the time justice. I took so much care and time to get into all these nooks and crannies, I was exhausted. So I had to step away from it and move on to something else while I contemplated doing that to the other two drawers. I moved on to the top, which I knew from the beginning I wanted to do this herringbone pattern with stir sticks. I did this exact thing with a different furniture flip I did a couple months ago. If you follow me on Instagram, you saw this all go down. It was a little bit of a fail because I did it and it was so beautiful and then I painted it and it just, you could not really see the pattern at all. So this time I wanted to do it right and get it stained and make it beautiful and a perfect statement piece for this dresser. You'll see in a few seconds here me going back and forth a lot because the angle cuts were giving me a really hard time. I am a new DIYer. I'm not professional and I'm just learning every day new things and new techniques. I'm doing my best and the angle cuts are just something I have not really mastered yet. So I ended up just doing it one by one and taking it cut by cut so I could get it exactly right. I did not want this to get messed up. I wanted it to be beautiful and as perfect as possible. I am 
not going to pretend to be the first person to think of using stir sticks for a project, but I will say that I didn't see anybody else do this until after I posted about the first time I did it. A couple people sent me some videos of other people doing it, which of course it's genius and so inexpensive. I will say though, one thing I don't love about using stir sticks is, well, it's kind of a double-edged sword. It's nice that they're thin because you don't have to worry about measuring much but they break really easily especially when you get to the small corners like right here i had so much trouble right here every time i'd use my jigsaw it would just tear that piece right apart so i eventually just kind of had to call it quits and said you know what it gives a character there's an empty spot right there and that's okay I am naturally a perfectionist, but I will say I'm very proud of myself because ever since I started DIY, I've learned to let a lot of things go. I am not perfect, I'm doing my absolute best, and I'm proud of myself for that. I always walk away from a project really proud of it because I know I put so much love and effort into it, and it's not going to be perfect because I'm not professional and I'm not really looking for it to be perfect. I made it and it's not going to look like it was from a factory or from a store. A human made it and humans aren't perfect and all I can say is I do my best and I'm really proud of that. sound.com The stain I chose is called Weathered Oak and I love it. I don't always like hate a stain, but I just really don't like those super orangey stains and this one wasn't that at all. It turned out so beautiful. It brought out all those different grains and textures in each stir stick and that's exactly what I was looking for. It is such a statement for this dresser and I am obsessed. Bensound.com Bensound.com This was one of those times where I was just so happy that it turned out exactly how I envisioned it. That does not happen very often for me. It, I mean, okay, it does sometimes, but <laughs> this was one of those times where I was just really happy it did because I really, really wanted it to. I was laughing at myself though because I noticed that one of the stir sticks didn't get flipped over. <laughs> you could see the ruler on it, but you know what? I actually really love it. I think it gives it so much character. Now that the top was done, it was time to move on to my other two drawers. And after spending so much time sanding the other one down, I made a decision that I was going to paint it the same green as the main color of the dresser. I originally wanted to at least stain the top one the same stain as the top of the dresser, but I just had to make a decision based off of how my body was feeling. You know, I am 17 weeks pregnant, so I had to do what was best for me. So before I got that done, though, I wanted to polyurethane the top of my dresser because I knew that that took a lot longer to dry than paint. So before I got painting, this needed to get done. I did two coats of polyurethane on the top and then I got painting the main part of the dresser because when I was sanding everything down it scratched up a lot of the top of the paint so I wanted to touch everything up, make sure I got all the nooks and crannies so that it was ready when I got the drawers done. Bensound.com 
As soon as the paint was dry on all the drawers, I pulled out this nifty tool I got off Amazon. I'll be sure to link it down in the description below. I love that tool because it makes doing handles so much easier. Any kind of drawer pull, it makes it so much easier. So I added these drawer pulls that I've used throughout our whole house. I like having some things cohesive and that is one of those things that you can find throughout our whole house is these matte black pulls. It was a kind of a no-brainer for me. I also had a ton left over from my kitchen, so it was a good way to save some money. And there you have the final reveal. I love the way this dresser came together. Getting it put in the baby's nursery got me so much more excited for him coming and getting his room put together. We're one step closer to having him here and that makes me really happy. Let me know in the comments what you think of this makeover. I absolutely love it. I'm really proud of myself. I think it came together perfectly for his room. I can't wait to show you everything else in this nursery. You will see that this ties in with everything perfectly. Let me know what you guys think and thanks so much for watching. Vincent.